the NFL week five about to kick off tomorrow night. It's Wednesday afternoon about 1, 1 1.30 p.m. right now while I'm shooting this. So let's kick this off right away. Uh, to get first off though, I get all my numbers from Bet365. There was three games this week with no lines, so I went and grabbed them off an alternate site that I sometimes will use once in a while for reference points and whatnot. So keep in mind that them games, and keep in mind that I'm just giving you guys the stats and how I feel about these games. If you guys have gut feelings, always stick with your gut feelings. I'm a big believer in that. I don't care how many people or prognosticators I listen to that will say they like this game or this game for this reason or that reason, but if my gut is strictly on a game, I'll roll with that feeling 100% of the time or 99% of the time, nothing's really 100%. So take that into consideration. Anyways, last week, finally a good bounce back week, 12 and three against the spread. I don't remember what my straight up was. Tampa Bay to kick things off on the Thursday nighter is in Chicago. The Bucks are three and a half point road favorites. Both teams head into this matchup with three and one records. The Bucks are 4-0 against the spread as road favorites. 0-4-1 against the spread, however, with te against teams with winning records. Godwin, Evans, McCoy, Fournette, OJ Howard, all watch out for them on Friday's injury report. That could affect the game and how the line maybe moves possibly closer to kickoff tomorrow night. Oh, right, so you're looking for the injury report by tomorrow, actually, for this game. My mistake. Uh, the Bears, meanwhile, they're 0-4 against the spread in October, 0-6 against against the spread versus teams with winning records. Foles, Trubinsky, anyone play quarterback for the Bears? Mind you, the Colts, they've been playing well on both sides of the ball, so Foles is kind of somewhere in between probably what we saw last week and what we saw when he came in with that comeback against the Falcons, mind you. Those two teams defensively are probably close to opposite ends of the spectrum. So I think Foles is somewhere in between. Can the Bears edge rushers keep this game close? That will be the key. I believe they can. That's why I like Tampa to win this game, but Chicago to keep it within a field goal and cover the spread. Next, Arizona, seven point favorites on the road to play the New York J-E-T-S. And the Jets, they will be starting Joe Flacco. Just heard that about an hour ago. At quarterback Darnold, he's out with a sprained AC joint, I believe it is, and I didn't write it down. Le'Veon Bell could return this week for the Jets. Arizona is 6-1-1 against the spread on turf. They're looking to bounce back against a weak opponent this week. Kyler Murray and the boys, uh, Hopkins, he's got a bit of a wonky ankle, but I don't think it's going to affect them that much. I like Arizona to bounce back big and win this game by at least a touchdown, 10 points, something like that. So I'm picking Arizona to win and cover. Buffalo Bills at Tennessee. This one has all the COVID-related alerts about it. This game is worried about being pushed. Uh, both teams are undefeated. The Bills 4-0. The Titans 3-0. It'll really come down to the Titans rushing game and Derrick Henry and the Bills. Josh Allen, he's got, what, 12 TDs this year to one interception interception sorry a, a crazy ratio if it wasn't for Russell Wilson tearing it up so bad Aaron Rodgers having a phenomenal year then we, we might be hearing a bit more about Josh Allen right now I like Tennessee to win and cover this game Bills go to four and one Tennessee goes to four and oh Carolina on the road to play Atlanta Panthers one and a half point underdogs on the road they're coming off two straight wins Atlanta, they just blow leads, blow leads, blow leads, blow leads. Carolina, they're 0-5 against spread in Atlanta and 0-5 against the spread versus Atlanta overall. The favorite, however, is 4-1 against the spread. Atlanta is 9-3 straight up versus 1-5 against the spread in week fives are the Falcons. But how many more DBs and people in the secondary can Atlanta lose and still even stay somewhat competitive. There's only so much that they can do if their defense is always on the field, not allowing Matt Ryan to score points to keep up or pull ahead of teams. I just think the wrong team is favored in this game because of all the injury factors. I don't care what the numbers say in this one or over the past whatever games head-to-head -head they've met and whatnot. Carolina is playing better. 
Atlanta is way too beat up and winless on the year. I will take the Panthers to win this game outright and therefore cover the spread. The Bengals on the road to face the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens, 13-point home favorites. They are 4-4 four four against the spread versus the AFC North. Jackson is 3-0 straight up for Cincinnati in his career. The Bengals are 5-1 against the spread in Baltimore, but they're allowing 158.5 rushing yards per game. You cannot be giving up that many rushing yards and expect a rookie quarterback to keep this game anywhere fucking close by any means. Baltimore is going to run away with this game. Joe Burrow, I'm glad you got your first win of your career last week because this week is going to be a nasty, nasty defeat. I'll take Baltimore to win this one. i like them to win by about 20 points in this game, 17 to 20, something like that. Ravens all day, all the way. Jacksonville on the road in Houston. The Texans fired Bill O'Brien. They're winless to start the year. I think I've said that before about the Texans to start a year. But anyways, Jacksonville, they're six-point road dogs. I don't know how Houston is favored by six points over anybody right now. Jacksonville, they're one and seven against the spread in week five, six, two, and one against the spread in Houston. Road team is 13, four, and one against the spread head to head. The underdog is six and two against the spread in this head to head matchup as well. Houston is 15 and four straight up versus Jacksonville in the head to head matchup. He, Texans, they're two and 13 against spreads in week five, 0 oh and four against spread versus the AFC. How much will firing your coach affect the Texans? Deshaun Watson, I really expect him to do something. I really love Houston to get this win, but I, I'm not comfortable laying six points. You're going to play this game. You play Jacksonville against the spread in Houston to win the game. LA Rams on the road, seven-point favorites in Washington to play the football team. The underdog in this series is 5-0 in Washington. The underdog is 6-2 against the spread versus each other. The Rams, they're 4-0-1 against the spread on grass, which Washington has the football team's home turf. However, the Rams, they've been bad defending the run this year as well. They have allowed over 600 yards and three, DD, three touchdowns to running backs this year. I like the Rams to win this game. Washington to keep it within the touchdown. Touchdown seems pretty much about right. I actually love that number. I think that's exactly where this game is going to fall. So I'll probably end up with a push on it. But I will take LA to win Washington to cover the spread. The Raiders in Kansas City to face the Chiefs. Mahomes, I don't believe he's lost to the Raiders yet in his career. The last three times these two teams have met, the Chiefs have won by 32, 18, and 31 points. Just blowing the Raiders out of the water. I don't care if they move to Las Vegas or not. Kansas City, 10-1 straight up versus the Raiders. They won the last three meetings, like I said. Can they contain Josh Jacobs? That's the key to the Raiders. If Jacobs gets going on the ground, it opens so much up for Derek Carr, downfield or anywhere, short passing game, anywhere. It just makes you pack the box a little more and free up a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, especially if they get some of their young rookie wide receivers like Ruggs back this week. I'm not sure what that's going to look like, how the injury reports are going to come out in two days, but keep an eye out on that one. However, I, I just 0-4 against spread in Kansas City is Las Vegas, 1-4 against the spread versus... 18 and 13 against the spread as double digit underdogs. So a bit of a number leaning in Vegas's favor. I like the Chiefs and I like them to win by two touchdowns in this one. And that is what I'm going with. The Philadelphia Eagles at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I can't believe they pulled that one off last week. Jeffrey Jackson, Rieger, Whiteside, four wide receivers all missing last week. Don't know what their updates will be for this weekend, including throwing. Tight end Dallas Goddard, their second best receiver on their team, in a lot of people's opinions, especially Eagles fans, uh, and not to mention the 3 0 linemen that were down last week. I, I don't know what it is, just like the end of last season. The, the more players that get hurt, it seems like the better they seem to start to play. I don't know what to make of the Eagles right now. They're just a mess, in my opinion. Once his accuracy is a disaster. I like how, after that one run, though, when my son was pointing it out to me last, watching the game last week, that Hey, after the one run by one, so the whole team, including Carson, seemed to get a little bit more confidence. And the more I've thought about it over the last few days, I think he was right on that as well. And it, we'll see what how that affects the team going forward. The Eagles are 35 and 22 against the spread as road underdogs. These two defenses 
or something else. Who can protect the quarterback the best in this game is what it's going to come down to. Watch that touchdown spread out. I don't think this is a seven point game in anybody's favor at any time. These two Ds have combined for 32 sacks this year. So whoever keeps their quarterback standing the longest is going to win the Battle of Pennsylvania, the Keystone State. Pittsburgh, I think, will sneak out the win. Philly will cover. Don't be surprised, though, if Philly did win this one outright. I just, the way they played this year, they showed me nothing to support them in a bet. So, touchdown or more on the under, on the as an underdog, I will be picking Philly against this, on this, against the spread. But, yeah, it, it's tough to pick my team to win this year at all. Miami, plus eight on the road to face the 49ers. San Fran, Jimmy G could return this week. Miami, one and four against spread versus... San Fran. When will we see Tua? Fitzpatrick, you haven't played that bad, but you're not getting W's, and why not see what the young kid has? He was so he's been so hyped for ever, it feels like, even though it's been what a year and a half, two years with year and a bit. I just want to see Tua play. I do not think Miami can compete with San Fran. I think San Fran wins this game, and I think they cover the spread, especially being at home. The Denver Broncos in New England. New England somehow is eight and a half point favorites. I don't think Newton's playing this Sunday. Maybe somebody knows something I don't. And that's mainly because Denver should be getting Drew Locke and Phillip Lindsay back. Two key players, starting quarterback, starting running back. For them, that could be a huge, huge factor in this game. The home team is seven and two against the spread in this head to head though. The favorite is seven and three against the spread in the head to head. 0-5 against spread in New England is Denver. 3-7 against spread versus New England. But the return of those two players, I just think Denver has enough to keep this game close. I don't think they can I don't think they will beat New England. I think they can beat New England this week. It might be a good upset play if you want to. However, I'm picking New England to win Denver to cover the spread. But watch out. I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos outright won this game. Indianapolis, the Colts in Cleveland to play the Browns. Browns Cowboys, oh my gosh, what a fucking game last week. My goodness, that was insane. That that one Beckham run or or the Jarvis Landry toss to Beckham off the double flip. Oh man, there were some nice plays in that game. Just uh, too bad there was zero defense played. Uh, Indy, one and a half point favorites on the road. They're 14-3 against spread in week five. Playing good on both sides of the ball. The home team is 3-1-1 one one against spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. The Browns, they're 0-4 against the spread versus the AFC. What will happen in this game? I like Indy to win because they are playing good on both sides of the ball where Cleveland's offense is starting to click, but their defense seems to be a little disappointing. I could just be... Could just be a little deceiving though because Dallas is one of the best offenses in the NFL this year and last year. It's no surprise that they put up points and yards on any team. So this one, I like Indy to win this and cover the little one and a half point spread. New York Giants, 10 point underdogs in Dallas, who I just talked about. Blowing another lead, dropping to one and three. The Eagles, even as atrocious as they've played, could be above 500 if they somehow manage to win this week. Dallas needs to win this just to take back the division lead. I think they do take care of business and win this game. The Giants, though, they're 14 and three against the spread on the road. 0 and six against spread against Dallas, however, two and seven against spread in Dallas. This number is just too big for a division rivalry. Jones, however, for the Giants, two straight games with less than 200 yards passing. That's just unacceptable. I don't care. Who you have as a receiver? One game blip, you get get some fluky plays, good defensive play by the other team, shit happens, whatever. But two games in a row with under 200 passing yards, that's just absolutely atrocious. The favorite is five and one against spread in this series. Dallas is 11 and three straight up. I don't think that changes. I think they go to 12 and three. Giants cover this spread, double digits, too much in the NFC East. I don't care how good or bad any of the teams are playing in that division. Very, very seldomly do you see double-digit blowouts. Minnesota in Seattle to play the Seahawks. Russell Wilson, you can't say enough things about this guy. I, I think he's underappreciated. I think all the hype goes to the Brady, Rodgers, etc., etc., Drew Breeses. Russell Wilson is, is playing like the best quarterback in the NFL right now. 
Tans down, in my opinion. He's playing phenomenal. I, I know Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, there's so many, plus the three I mentioned before. Minnesota, Seattle, Minnesota, 10 and 3 against spread in week 5, 0 and 4 against spread in Seattle, 1 and 5 against spread versus Seattle. The favorite is 6 and 1 against the spread in this series. Home team is 6 and 1 against the spread. Nothing changes here. Seattle wins this by a touchdown. I think this spread is actually pretty good. I think this again could end up being a push if this number stays the same, but I will roll with the home team and the favorite in this one. LA Chargers in New Orleans to play the Saints. Even without Michael Thomas, Drew Brees and Emmanuel Sanders seem to have found somewhat of a connection. So I'd say New Orleans, they're going to be a scary fucking team once Michael Thomas comes back, if he can continue that chemistry with Sanders going. And you add on top of that, the phenomenal play by Kimura that, that he's showing and displayed once again. It's no surprise he's been playing well, but the kid's been fucking lighting it up this year, even though the Saints are 2-2. Two and two. The Chargers, they're 3-0-1 against spread on the road. 1-4 against spread versus New Orleans. This game, I don't know what to make of it. I don't see the Chargers upsetting New Orleans, but I don't see the Saints winning this by 8 points. I think New Orleans wins. The Chargers cover that 7.5 points. This one's closer to a touchdown once again. I think quite a few of these games are going to fall in that 5-7 point, 5-8 point range this week. I will roll with the Chargers to cover the spread and the Saints to win the game. That's my Week 5 picks 2020. Peace.